Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So in the previous video, we have talked about the bone, its biology and how it acts as a source of DNA. So in this video, which is the last video of this uh, series of sources of biological evidences, we'll be talking about the teeth, which is a very important source of biological evidence. So let's start. What is teeth? Teeth is usually the hardest substance in the body and uh, uh, besides being essential for chewing the teeth play an important role in speech this is its function besides chewing it also helps us in production of the speech or speaking in an organized way so the branch of uh, forensics which deals with the application of dental science to the administration of law is called forensic odontology or forensic dentistry this question could be asked in your net exam moving on during the embryonic development, two sets of teeth begin to form. The first set is the primary or deciduous teeth, which are 20 in number. This is very important. You have to remember this, that a human being has primary or deciduous tooth, which is 20 in number, while the secondary or the permanent set of teeth, which is 32 of in number. So let's see this diagram. The, these are the parts of the mouth, which are lips the hard palate soft palate this is this portion is the soft palate it is basically the uh, what we can say roof of our mouth then the alva papilla of the tongue which contains the taste buds basically human being has four types of teeth premolars canine incisors and molars we study this in very much detail in forensic medicine for this video purpose we'll just study their names and their location so these are the premolars, the canines, the incisors and the molars. Let's move further and understand the biology of teeth. So human teeth is divided into two sections. The upper portion is of the crown which can be seen and the lower portion is of the root which is embedded in the skin and cannot be seen. Basically there are four sections. The dentine the enamel, cementum and the pulp cavity, four sections that are present in the teeth. Let's talk about dentine. The bulk of each tooth consists of a calcified connective tissue which is called dentine. So let's see where, where is dentine. Here it is. This is dentine and it is basically a calcified connective tissue of the teeth. Let's move to the enamel. What is an enamel? The dentine of the crown is covered by a layer of enamel. So, above the dentine, this, this portion is the enamel. It covers the dentine and it is the hardest substance of the body. You should remember this. Third section is the cementum, the bone-like structure that surrounds the root of the tooth. So, this is cementum and it surrounds the root portion of the teeth. Further is the pulp cavity. The interior chamber within the tooth surrounded by dentine is known as the pulp cavity. So this is the pulp cavity and it is usually surrounded by the dentine and it is filled with a dental pulp which contains various cells which are very important source of DNA. We will be studying this in the next slides. So hope you have understood the sections of human teeth. Let's move further and see the cellular portion of the teeth. So like the bone. The teeth also contains the cellular portion, which is divided into four parts. So basically, we have four types of cells in our teeth, which are the odontoblast, the cementoblast, the cementocytes and the ameloblast. Each type of cell has its own function, which is very important for the teeth. So let's see the odontoblast cells. Odontoblast cells, they basically play important role in the formation of dentine. So here it it is a very important function of odontoblast cell. It plays a very important role in the formation of dentine. So dentine is usually formed by the odontoblast cells. You can see here in the diagram, these are the odontoblast cells. And these processes which are coming out from them are the usually the odontoblast processes. They also have very significance. We'll be studying in the next slide about it. Hmm. Next function is they secrete collagens and ground substances that are the components of dental matrix. So it usually also plays role in the secretion of collagens, which is a component of dental matrix or we can say dental pulp. Let's talk about the cementoblast. Cementoblasts secrete collagens and ground substances to form the extracellular matrix of the cementum. 
So cementoblast cells also secrete collagens and other ground substances to form the extracellular matrix of the cementum. So cementum portion usually formed by the cementoblast cells. Now the cementocytes. Cementocytes are basically those cells, those cementoblast cells which are embedded in the cementum. So they are termed as cementocytes. While the ameloblast cells, they play a role in producing the enamel and are subsequently lost during tooth eruption. What is tooth eruption? Tooth eruption is usually a process of development of the tooth uh, in which the uh, teeth comes out in the mouth and can be visible. So usually the ameloblast cells, they are shed during the process of tooth eruption and they forms the hardest substance of our body that is the enamel. So hope you have understood the cellular portion of the teeth also. Let's move further and see how teeth acts as a source of DNA. So the characteristics of teeth, their alignment and the overall structure of the mouth. It provides information for identifying a person. So like every other part of the body, teeth are also very individual. And they are also, uh, you can see that no two person can have same uh, pattern and same alignment of teeth in the mouth here teeth starts acting as a source of individualization from here itself so why we use teeth in forensics is because uh, there are particular uh, circumstances where decomposition occurs in the body where in certain crime scenes we found a decomposed body so what happens here will be the soft tissues they will we get they will get decomposed but the odontological comparison is possible since the dental evidence often remains intact so the dental from here we can understand that dental evidence or the teeth it stays intact for long duration of time and we can do the process of individualization from the decomposed body also through the odontological comparison but uh, when what about odontological comparison we usually don't have a set of uh, data to compare with in many situations so here it is written when no anti-mortem dental record is available for comparison then what we do is we resort to forensic dna testing this is very important which can be carried out for post-mortem human identification now if the body is decomposed and we don't have an anti-mortem dental record of that particular body so what we'll do is we'll do the forensic DNA profiling of that body through the dental evidence and then it can be used for DNA or, or we can say it can be used for human identification. We can identify that body through that DNA profile that is created from that decomposed body. Okay. Now last is the mineralized dental structure protects the DNA from degradation. Let's understand why this DNA can be extracted from teeth after uh, longer durations or if the body is decomposed also then how DNA is conserved in the teeth. It is because uh, the mineralized dental structure, it protects the DNA from degradation in cases where it may be degraded in other tissues. So because teeth is a very hard substance, it contains a very hard substance which is enamel and it is a mineralized structure, it protects the DNA from degradation. Now there is also the dental pulp tissue which contains various cells and it is a suitable source of DNA. As I've told you earlier that the dental pulp contains many types of cells which uh, are responsible for uh, nuclear DNA. So we can extract nuclear DNA from that. However, when tooth evidence has been exposed to high temperature and humid environments, decomposition of the pulp tissue can occur. Now in such cases, what we can do is we can resort to the cementoblast cells which are within the cementum and they contain both the nuclei and mitochondria. So both the nuclear as well as the mitochondrial genome can be uh, used for profiling and, and it acts as a source of DNA. So in certain cases, when the teeth is exposed to high temperatures or high humidity, then the dental pulp tissue will be decomposed through this. So what we can do is we can resort to the cementoblast cells. Additionally, odontoblast processes, it also contains mitochondria which can be used as a source of mitochondrial dna so you can see here in the diagram this diagram you can see these are the odontoblast cells okay and these are the odontoblast processes what they contain is they contain mitochondria which has which acts as a major source of mitochondrial dna so we can do the profiling dna profiling through the odontoblast processes also 
So here we can understand that teeth is a very rich source of DNA evidence, right? Let's see how uh, this DNA can be extracted from the teeth. So this is the teeth evidence. And uh, firstly, we have to dissect the teeth for DNA isolation because it is a hard substance. So we can do the vertical cutting or we can do the horizontal cutting. Usually, uh, there are tools for cutting the teeth. In vertical cutting, we dissect the pulp, the dentin and the cementum tissues. While in the horizontal cutting, we are di only dissecting the root portion. Okay. So, this can be done for DNA extraction or isolation. Yeah, I was talking about the tools of uh, the dissecting. So, these are the tools which are used. Now, the extraction of pulp tissue using endodactyl endodontic access procedures what is endodontic access procedures you must be having with dental cavity so you went to a doctor and what he uses is an endodontic access procedure for removing that cavity from your teeth so usually this procedure contains a tree panning the occlusal surface of the tooth using dental burr mounted on a turbine we usually with the help of this uh, dental burr this is a dental burr and we make holes hole and uh, what we do is create a cavity endodontic axis now we extract the pulp tissue uh, using a nerve brooch this is a nerve brooch and we use it for extracting the pulp tissue what is pulp tissue understand here so this this portion is the pulp tissue Nerve brooch with the help of nerve brooch, we extract this portion, we do the fillings, and then again the tooth is intact or free from cavity. So, the same procedure is followed for collecting the dental pulp for the cells for nuclear DNA profiling through the teeth, and also, um, as we all know, that uh, uh, the dental pulp tissue it contains number of cells which can be used for DNA profiling. So, hope you have understood this procedure also. So this was all about this video. Hope you have understood how teeth acts as a source of DNA evidence. If you have any kind of doubt, you can ask in the comment section below. You can also join our Facebook as well as Instagram handles, which are in the name of Savvy Forensics. Further, you can also join our Telegram channel for regular updates and for further more content and discussion. And you can also visit our website SavvyForensic.com, which will be very useful for your preparation of net exam. You can also give your feedback or any kind of suggestion on this number. This is a WhatsApp number and you can message here. So this was all about this video series. Hope you have liked this video. You can share it with your friends and you can subscribe to this channel for more quality content. Thank you very much for joining.